game with crappy people. <laughs> <laughs> Very crappy. We're uh, Canuck and a Brit and, uh, and uh, Portuguese. And we're drinking Clodo Crap, which is... Dirk, tell us about Clodo Crap. It's really crappy, but it's yeah. fun to drink. It's so enjoyable. It's fun, it's expressive. And I must say, I really like the nose. It's haughty, it's stinky, but it's so good. And, uh, well, basically, if you don't like the stink, you just decant it and it goes away. Yeah. No problem. I think it's like people, though. It's like, um, I'm a faulty person. I'm flawed. And you're talking about yourself? Yes, I'm a flawed person. But some people like to hang out with me, which is a relief, because it's kind of cool that, that people could still hang out with me, despite my flaws. N no comment. <laughs> <laughs> He's just here for the wine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have um, newt and toe of bat. What the hell is clothe of crap? I have Newton toe of bat. What the hell is clove of crap? That was my tasting note. Yes. I yes. I, I have Newt. It does. The I have Newt. I'm getting a bit of I have Newt here. Um, it's a smell I frequently encounter. You don't want to know what. <laughs> but um. No, it's so this, eminently charming and this, drinkable. There's some reduction, which is nice, yeah? But do, do you think it's like, like um, life and, and people and stuff, that sometimes slight flaws can bring out the beauty? Uh, the, the perfect wine is made out of many little imperfections. Yeah. yeah. If the perfect wine exists. And well, the, pursuit of, the pursuit of perfe perfection itself is, I think, a flawed thing. Yeah? It's like happiness. You don't get to be happy by pursuing happiness. No. Happiness happens when you live your life in the present, I guess. Yeah, do the best out of your life. Yes. And so, how did you decide to do this wine? What led you to... It must have been quite a brave step to, to bottle this and market it and talk about it. No, well, it's a long story. Um, it is based on making some reductive wines to enhance the nose of Charm. And so I one day put some grapes into a tank, and uh, Nick did it in a very perfect way that there was no juice. And then I looked at it and I said, well, What is going to happen? This is going to rot. It. And so I put some juice from Pinot Noir into it, and then I looked at it and said, what is going to happen? Nothing. And so I ended up getting scared and so I filled the tank with uh, the same grapes that were pressed uh, in the lagar. And so this is a juice fermenting outside and the grapes fermenting inside in a, at a different rate. And that causes a lot of stinkiness um, and you don't really get much color. And uh, we put it in barrel and then by the time we started doing the blendings. It was interesting that putting two or three percent of a stinky wine into the charm really made a big difference. Yeah. Even though everybody hated this kind of wine. And then one day I was with Daniel Isley and uh, I was sitting next to Claude Mouche bottle and he So Daniel is the favorite wine guy in London, yeah? Yep. Yeah. And uh, we were drinking a, a stinky, reductive Greek wine, which I really like very much. And, uh, and suddenly I looked at him and I said, well, I'll make you a sort of crap. <laughs> but I, to be honest, I don't remember if he told me the name crab or I just mentioned crab, but it stuck in my head. And it took me then two or three years to do it because he always used everything into the charm. And then in 2013, um, we made quite more a lot more and then this is the result of some crappy barrels that I particularly like. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's, love it. it's not perfect. It's certainly not perfect. It's, it's more than Thankfully. perfect. But it's so drinkable. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's fun to drink and it's aging very well. So it will be interesting to see this in five years or ten mm. years. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug.